By the end of this video, you're going to be awesome at UI colors. But let's start by picking the right tools. We're gonna be using our eyes, our brains, some design software, you can pick whatever you like, and then next to that, ChatGPT and Midjourney, because we want to be in on that AI game, don't we? Of course, to use those AI tools well, we need to understand color theory by heart. Otherwise, AI can give us some bad examples and bad ideas that we wouldn't even know. So let's not be lazy. We're gonna use the 60-30-10 color theory rule. It's a rule most often used in interior design, but it works really great for UI as well. Here is an example. 60% of the image should be a primary color, in our case white. Then 30% should be a secondary color to counterbalance the primary. And 10% should be an accent color to make it pop, in this case the yellow. If we take it to a simple user interface, we might end up with something beautiful like this. 60% white, 30% dark grey and then 10% blue. Because the blue is very in your face and the most visible, it works great as the call to action button. Now let's twist it a little. If you're just starting your design journey, I would really strongly suggest you use the white for the background, then the dark gray for the text, and then one accent color for, well, the accents, which is the buttons and the most important elements. That is the safest way for your designs not to suck. But of course, even within the same three colors, you can flip the proportions and end up with something nice and interesting as well. It still works with the accent bringing the attention to the button, but it's cognitively heavier for the user. It means that they're gonna take a little bit longer to understand it. It can be a great fit for some brands, but yeah, practice that after you're good with the classic safe way of doing colors. Let's start our exercise we'll be making a simple, minimal, yet pretty beautiful furniture store app. So first, let's use ChatGPT to generate some colors for us. The thing about these prompts is that they're not really as difficult as some people have led you to believe, so it's pretty easy to learn to do them well yourself. My prompt here is, generate a 60-30-10 minimalist color palette for a modern minimal furniture e-commerce app. Of course, you can be more specific here if you want. You can specify the accent color of a certain hue or specify that you want the background to be white. But I wanted to see what ChatGPT gets us here. It came up with these three colors. F5, F5, F5 for the backgrounds, 4A, 4A, 4A for the text, and then this not really perfect blue for the accents. Now let's quickly mock that up. Yeah, I don't think so. So I asked ChatGPT to generate another accent color because I wasn't really happy with this one. It didn't have that pop, that mysterious thing that most people really want in a design, but they don't really know how to express it. And it came back with another muted approach. So I asked it to make it more vibrant, more punchy. And yeah, it's better, but still not perfect. So here is where experience and that famous human touch comes in. Take that initial blue color and then slide the saturation slider all the way between 80 and 90%. Don't go above 90, it's gonna be too in your face. But between 80 and 90 is a perfect sweet spot. Now this color works way better than this one. Let's also add plus 10 to the hue to make it a little bit more blue, or you can go the opposite way if you want it to be more green. As you can see, using ChatGPT, we created a pretty nice color palette, albeit with some tweaks. The thing is that for 60-30-10, you can actually use pretty specific colors almost every time. My go-to colors are white for the background, 
2C, 2C, 2C for the text, and then a specific color that is 90% brightness and 90% saturation, and then, well, we're gonna pick the hue. Just avoid the ranges between 40 and 120 because these aren't really that great looking. This method is way faster than going into ChatGPT and asking it to provide us with some ideas. But you know what, let's use the colors that it provided, just so it's a little bit different to what I normally use. Now, let's jump into Mid Journey and generate ourselves some nice looking product shots. This is of course a portfolio project, not a real one, because in the real one you probably have already some provided images of products and you don't really have any visual control over how they look. Here we can go a little bit further and create product images that match our color scheme. So here's my imagine prompt. A modern minimalist blue designer armchair on a completely white background. Yeah, that looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Now let's use ChatGPT again to provide us with a name for this and a short description. Hey ChatGPT, give me a product name for a minimal designer armchair in the Scandinavian style. Okay, let's see what it came up with. Introducing the Nordy Serenity <laughs> armchair, a minimal designer armchair that embodies the essence of Scandinavian style combining clean lines, understated elegance and exceptional comfort. Well, who wouldn't want to sit in that? That isn't bad, but it's not really that creative, nor the serenity, I mean, really. At some point, if you've been doing design for a while, you're able to come up with better names much faster than it takes you to go to ChatGPT and ask for it. But let's use it. And the description doesn't really make sense with the introducing part, so let's remove the entire first part and end up with this. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now, using the same methods, I'll generate some similar products for customers that also bought them, paste them in, take a look, and don't trust AI blindly. Make sure it all flows well and has optical balance. For example, you can adjust the position of some elements when necessary. You can switch them around if it's too heavy on the left or the right side. Or you can completely replace a product that doesn't seem to fit the optical structure of this thing. And this is what we ended up with. Not bad. As you can see, AI can help you a little bit in design work, but you can't fully rely on it at least not yet. You really need to use your brain, you really need to use the critical thinking and your design knowledge to pick the right things from what AI generates. And I believe this is going to be the approach to AI in the long run, so you really need to get that knowledge in your head. This is a small part of my future designer in the world of AI mini course. That way you'll be able to use AI to do things faster, but also make sure that the things you do are high quality. And if you want to learn how not to use AI in your daily work, check out this video and obviously subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let me know in the comments how you used AI in your work already. And obviously, have a beautiful day.